voice. First time on the show. Are Kim you ready? McAuliffe. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? <laughs> it's my first time and I'm definitely ready. I'm up for it. All right. Well, well, we're up to no ready or not. Here we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's oh, good news. What the F45 is going to yeah. be released July 28th on Silver Lining Music. This is the new Girl School album. It's been, I guess, quite a few years since the last one. Well, yeah, apparently it's been about eight years, even though oh. to me it just feels only like a few years ago, you know. I mean, time's going so bloody fast. All I can say is I, I must be having a really good time because obviously time flies when you're having fun. So I must I must be having a hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> you don't sound convinced. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. <laughs> Our guest, Kim McAuliffe, first time on the show. I mean, Jackie was on the show a few years ago, but this is your All first right. time, so welcome. Yes, it is. Yeah. And, and yeah. You, should, you should say it. It's what the 45. Well, I, I don't usually swear, but yes, it's what the... F I'm not saying it. 45. Because, of course, that's 45 not, years, but, Kim. Where did, yeah, they, where did the time go? Well, exactly. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But, I mean, that's what we're always saying. We're going, what the f has happened, you know? So um, that's why we we suddenly thought we'd keep saying it. That's a great um, album title. It made us laugh anyway. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll talk about the new album. We'll talk about a little bit of history with Girls School. Can you just move your camera so your your face is a little more in the screen and it doesn't sound look like you're oh, singing? Oh, no, okay. Just as well, I've got my shades. That's all I can say because um, I didn't realize... No, shades are fine. You can leave your shades on. It's all good. Oh, yeah, it's all yeah, part yeah. of it's all yeah, part of the rock no. star, star image. It's all good. I've got, no, I've got no bloody makeup on, so that's the reason. Uh -huh. it, it's fine. It's fine. All we're, right, we're so, all natural ourselves. That's right. Um, we're natural. Uh, I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> so, you know, when you ahead, started Alan. 45 years ago, you know, you were right there at the beginning with everybody, Saxon and everybody else. What, what do you think you would be doing all these years later, decades later? Um, not this, that's for sure. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, when we um, first had our success back in the 80s and we were all in our early 20s, we used to, and that's when our lovely Kelly was still with us, of course. We used to all say to each other, no matter what we're doing when we're in our 40s, no matter where we are in the world, we all must get together and meet up, you know, like somewhere like the top of St Paul's or something, and all just have a good old meet up, you know, to talk about the old days. But of course, that's never happened because we've never, we're still here. Yeah. It's it's interesting you mentioned Kelly, you know, she's so... Yeah so symbolic in the band like especially in the early years right she was yeah. i wouldn't say you i would say you her i don't mean her face right her her yeah. legacy i mean what yeah, does her yeah. legacy mean in girl school today and and for those of you who don't know kelly passed uh, quite a few years ago you know and uh yeah. but left the band before that all happened but yeah. what does her legacy mean in girl school today well, she did sort of leave and then went to L.A. for a few years, then came back again and rejoined, but then sadly then got ill, you know, so and she didn't obviously want to play anymore after that. So, um, well, I mean, she she was everything to the band because obviously we started it off together, you yeah. know. So, um, and she actually, because then we were all in South London and she lived in North London. So, of course, that's bloody miles away, North London. It's like a different country to us. So <laughs> she came and lived with me and mum and dad. And, um, yeah, so we shared a room, bedroom, and, of course, we were really young at that point at that time, and uh, we had a right old laugh, and we, we just sort of did a lot of growing up together, really. And, um, yeah, and, of course, she was, she was, she still is like an iconic image, and her playing still, when I listen to some tracks, I, I still sort of get shivers up my spine, the way, you know, she, she just was unique, really. Yeah, she was one of those annoying people as well that just picked up an instrument, I just played it straight away. Now, very she hadn't even, you know, what I mean, she could just pick up anything and just start playing. You know, very annoying. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, looking back, you know, you got the Gallagher brothers and Raven, the Saxon still touring. We see them every time they come. I mean, what what made that era so special that it's carried through all the way? Like you said, forty five years later. Yeah, I've no idea. I really haven't, um, because uh, I do get asked a lot about any new bands that I'm I'm into that could take the place of when we all peg out, basically, you know. And um, I, 
I mean, there are a few good bands around, but I must admit, I, don't, I really don't get out that much. Anyway, I'm living in the middle of nowhere. That's my excuse. Um, but, uh, yeah, there seemed to be some, well, perhaps there was something in the water at that point in time. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, it, it did. there was a lot going on, that's for sure, back in the late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's interesting. They always, you know, say the Go-Go's were like the first band, all-female band, and, you know, then the Runaways, but no one really gives the accolades to girls school who was out there really, you know, playing the bars really. And I mean, you know, even uh, what's her name uh, from the, the go-go's Valentine, what's her first name? Kathy. Uh, Kathy, you know, she was even in the band at one yes. point at the early days. So, I mean, yeah. you know, you see the documentaries on the go-go's, you see them, you know, the rock and roll hall of fame, but it should have been girls school who was there at the beginning at the very, why an all girls band? at the beginning uh well the simple answer to that was we couldn't find any boys that wanted to play with us so uh, we had no choice i mean you know it, it was that simple uh, my cousin who lived next door and we were both only children so he was like a brother to me he was a couple of years older and he first start, you know had a guitar so of course i still remember him showing me his guitar and go wow i remember my mum and dad going don't you get any ideas <laughs> you know and then uh, a year later, I got I had his guitar, and there we were, you know. And then of course he started to uh, form a band, and I and and then I'd already said to Enid, who lived in the same street, about let's well let's us form a band, you know. And then of course we were saying to Lee, oh come on then, come let's all get a band together. He's got not likely, you know. There's no way they didn't want girls in their band, and. To be fair, I, I don't blame them that much because we couldn't even play anyway. We decided we wanted to be in a band before we could actually play the bloody things, you know. So, um, but still, you know, yeah. The only uh, the only other way we could actually form a band was to find other like-minded girls and all sort of learn together, really. So that's what happened. All right. You know, and you guys are trailblazers, like Jimmy said, right? Uh, you know, there was maybe the Runaways and then there was you guys. And, and, and a lot of British bands... Their success just didn't translate over on this side of the pond. What, what, what was your thinking? Uh, why would that might have been? Um, well, I think that first of all, um, you have to tour a hell of a lot over there, and it's a big country. I mean, you Canada, obviously, and, and the states. It's a bloody big country, and there's so many bits. Obviously, the east coast and west coast are completely different, really, aren't they? And where you are, I mean, it's all. So it's you have to sort of do the lot, and you have to put the hours in if you like so uh, yeah i suppose you know but i, I got I, I gotta tell you there was a lot of momentum in the early 80s on your first three albums in canada in the united states and then uh you know and, and especially um lemmy who sort of gave you the nod right that stamp mm. of approval i mean you want to just talk about the meeting with lemmy and sort of that relationship as it grew over the years well, funny enough, that's the first time we ever came uh, came over was to Canada because we went gold in um, in Canada with Hit and Run, and yeah. so the first time we actually toured uh, was in, in Canada, and uh, yeah, so um, that was back in God no eighty one or so. I, I'm hopeless about dates and times and years. We'll just say the early days. Yes, yeah, in, the, uh, in the early days. <laughs> in the early days. Well, what happened in the early days? Um, yeah, if I can still remember them, well, I can, of course, uh, was that we, uh, we would, could people think that Lemmy just suddenly saw us and then it all happened all overnight, you know? Well, no, it wasn't as simple as that. We were actually touring around as girls' school, especially around Europe, in my mum and dad's stolen van. Poor mum and dad, <laughs> they bought this van that they were going to turn into a camper van and go touring around. Well, that sort of that went out the window because we ended up commandeering it and just tore it all <laughs> over the place and ground it into the ground. But, um, yeah, so it was about, we were touring for a couple of years, but the thing is over here, especially, um, every time we played a punk club, because I forget this was when punk was all around and started, we played a punk club and they thought we were heavy metal. We played heavy metal clubs. They thought we were punks. So we couldn't <laughs> win either way, you know? And, um, but, uh, good friends of ours, a band called UK subs who are still going, but I, apparently um, knocking on the head this year um but they just uh, recorded a single with a little independent company called city records and um and then city records asked us because we were great mates with them asked us if we wanted to uh, to record a single and of course we jumped at it because you know it's every band's dream isn't it you know 
um, to get in the recording studio. I must admit, it wasn't quite what we were expecting. It was some, you know, dank, smelly cellar in the middle of Soho. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but whatever. Um, yeah, so we knocked out Take It All Away. And just as we were coming up the steps, you know, blinking into the sunlight, um, <laughs> there was John, John Peel standing at the top of the stairs. And he just sort of happened to start a conversation, you know, say hello or whatever, and what you're doing. And and we had a good old chat with him. Before we knew it, he was playing it on um, his radio show, which was huge, of course, over here. Um, so, and then um, Lemmy and Motorhead were looking for a band to support them on their first major British tour, which was the Overkill tour. And then he heard the single and then sort of saw pictures of us. Meanwhile, we'd have already had got given a 10-inch single of theirs, a vinyl, the Motorhead single, and put it on and thought, Blood, this was a few months before, funny enough, and we thought, bloody hell, you know, that's a, that's a great racket. And then, of course, <laughs> saw the photo of them and thought, oh, my God, look at them sort of thing, you know. Of course, <laughs> next thing we know, um, Lemmy's invited himself down to one of our rehearsals so we weren't, we didn't know what to expect, you know. We were going, oh God, you know, after just seeing the photos of him. Um, but yeah, of course, we just got on, on like a house on fire, and um, he invited us on to the tour, the Overkill tour, and so that was that. And so we were suddenly thrust into, you know, the the, the bigger stages and the proper touring, um, and finally we sort of found our niche because again, it was like Motorhead were the same; they were sort of crossover between the punk and, and rock you know mm. so yeah there we were <laughs> what, what was lemmy's most enduring uh, characteristic or quality in your in your opinion oh he's, he's he was the funniest i mean he, he was just hilarious and things used to come out with you know he'd have you in stitches and uh yeah he was he was, he was just really funny and really nice and, and so supportive and of course after us lot it wasn't just us he supported as females. He went on to support quite a lot of other females um, in rock. So, you know, he did his bit. He did his bit for women in rock, that's for sure. What was the male to female ratio back then? And what's the male to female ratio of your fans today? I'm assuming oh, back then it was all men, right? Oh, God, or yeah. boy, young yeah, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah mostly. Um, very few women. In fact, when I, um, when I was at school, the only girl that I knew that was into rock was funny enough, um, a, a vicar's daughter and Sarah, her name was, I still remember. And we actually went together to see Black Sabbath at the Hammersophonian and Deep Purple up doing their burn sets with Coverdale and Glenn Hughes and stuff. So, yeah. So um, I think, you know, yeah, we were definitely the only two girls in my school, which had about 2000 people there, 2000 oh. girls, but yeah, at the gigs, yeah, hardly any. And now, it um, all depends on what sort of countries, but Sweden, especially, loads of women there, loads of girls, and loads of female bands have come up from there as well. And a lot of them come up to us afterwards and said, oh, you know, you've really inspired us. And But, I mean, that's only really all happened in the past 20 years. I can't believe that. that that's what I'm getting at, because I, I, yeah. back in the day, there was no women yeah, yeah. bands. There were very few women bands, and there were very few fans who followed. Yeah, yeah. Just well, metal when, in when, general. Yeah. When we first had our success in the early 80s, we were expecting all these women to come out, you know, and start up, start up doing it. And there weren't any. They just didn't, it didn't, didn't happen. You know, we couldn't believe it. We were thinking, oh, this is odd. And I say it's only just now, or even just recently, even the past 10 years, that, um, that it's been quite normal now. And what about the, the male sort of attitude towards the women on stage? So you have not only a male presence, I think men were a lot ruder in general to women trying to. Be oh a yeah, bad. yeah. The, the attitude was pretty bad. Oh yeah, yeah, it was definitely. But we just used to laugh it off, you know. And I, I still remember that. Um, I mean, there was all that thing about we'd be on stage, they'd go show us your tits and all that business, you know. And we go, we go. Well, we would, we would say show us yours, but we really don't want to see it anyway, you know. So. <laughs> And, you know, you just get used to like stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a lot better now. That's for sure. I'm, I'm, I haven't stopped listening to the album since I got it. I mean, the guitar oh, yeah. work, the, the the vocals. And I hear, you know, influence. I, I, like a band like Thunder Mother. I can see here where they probably were influenced by girls school. Is there, you mentioned there's, there's a lot of them that came out uh, saying that you were influenced. Is there other bands that... Um, 
you think you had a direct influence on? Oh, uh, well, definitely Thunder Mother. I know that because Philip has told us. And of course, she's co-written a song on it as well on the album. I don't know if you saw that, if you noticed that. Um, but yeah, bless her. We, we did some songwriting with her on Zoom, which was really good fun. And she's great. Oh, she's off. I think she's off on tour again now with the Scorpions or she's finished or something. So, yeah, she's uh, and then there was Crucified Barbara. They came from Sweden again. I think they were brilliant. And we actually toured with them. They supported us in America and Canada. The last tour we did over there. Um, and what are some others? Oh, blimey. There's Burning Witches at the moment. I think these are all oh, yeah. Scandinavian bands. Yeah, enough. yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. There's not but, many but, British bands. But also on the album, we should mention there's a cover of Motorhead, um, yeah. and and there's you have Biff from Saxon, you have Phil Campbell, Duff McKagan from Guns N' Roses, yeah, uh, doing born, a cover of Born to Raise Hell. I mean, what was it like to work with Duff? Was it just files being transferred back and forth, or have you known him for years, or was he no. a fan? Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. That's so weird these days because obviously I keep moaning about all this internet stuff and technology and that, but, you know, it does come in handy sometimes because, um, of course, it was all done. He was at home, you know, in L.A. or something doing it. Um, but, no, what happened was we were just trying to think of a, of a song to finish the album because we were thinking it's possible this could be even our last album. I mean, if it takes us as long as it did, the luck to do this one, to do the next one, if there would be a next one, um, you know, we'd be 70 old or something. So, you know, it might not happen. But um, yeah, ha well, having said that, the record company already want another one now for next year, but that's another story. We're going, are you, are you nuts? <laughs> anyway, um, what happened was, uh, well, obviously we've known Phil for donkey's years and he was quite happy to play on this one because of course this was a track that he actually played on in Motorhead as opposed to playing Eddie's yeah. stuff, you know, our lovely right. Eddie. Um, so that was great. And then, of course, Biff, who we've now known longer than Lemmy, because uh, we all started off at the same time. We just thought, who could sing it? And, of course, there wasn't anybody else to think of, really, apart from Biff, our Biffy boy. And um, so he was on tour in Germany. So he did it somewhere, you know, Germany somewhere and just sent it. And then, of course, a friend of mine, he said, um, oh, he said, um, just out of interest, he said, I know Duff and I know he was a massive um, friend of Lemmy's and a massive Motorhead and girls' school fan, you know, what do you want me to ask him? And I said, oh, don't be stupid, you know. <laughs> I said, you're having a laugh, you know, sort of thing. And he went, no, no, I'll ask him if you want. I said, well, that'd be great, you know, obviously. And sure enough, the next day, he sent an email back saying, sure, whatever they need. So wow. we, we, could, we could believe it, yeah. And then the, the funniest thing was, then he got back again and he said, oh, he said, um, do you mind if I do it in, say, like a couple of weeks' time because I'm touring Australia and New Zealand, you know? And we went, of course we don't mind, you know, as if we're going to say, <laughs> no, you have to do it right now, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, bless him. It was lovely of him to do it, you know? So, yeah, hopefully we'll get to meet him one day. Uh, I, I yeah. will agree with Alan. I mean, this album, it might be, you know, it, when people consider the first three albums as the classic girls' school albums, right? This fits right along them as a another classic. And I'm not just saying that. I, I think it's a very strong album. All the songs are very strong, very hooky, catchy. It's got that punk element. It's got that metal elements. The recording and production are are, are solid. Uh, yeah. And the guitar work, wow, man. Like Alan said, man, from the rhythm to the solos. And I know Joe Stump is in there as well yeah. on Are You Ready? And yeah. it is what it is. It's everyone's favorite expression. So I think it's a perfect way to begin an album because it is what it is. And that's yeah, basically yeah, yeah. the expression of this decade. Well, I mean, that's, again, that's another saying that we always say, well, it, you know, especially if you're on the road and something is. happens like it always does. You know, go, oh, well, it is what it is. What are we going to do about it? And I kept thinking, that's that going to make a really good title one day. I mean, this was, I had it in my head for a good couple of years, you know. It was always, and, and I was singing it around in my head for a couple of years. So as soon as we knew that we had to get our backsides into gear and do this album, that was one of the first ones that we got together, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> well, why did it take so long to release this album? Um, <clears throat> well, we're pretty we're pretty bad when we, <laughs> when we to, to get around to things. And um, so, yeah, I mean, really, we, we really do need like a kick up the backside when it comes to actually getting things together. I mean, you know, the record company kept saying, because we owed them this album. 
And um, they kept saying, no, it's really time you, you know, you recorded a new album for us. And we kept going, yeah, 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 of course, of course, yeah, yeah, we'll get around to it. Then, of course, the COVID thing happened. So that knocked everything back for a couple of years. The Invisible um, Killer? The Invisible oh, yeah, Killer. Yeah, 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 yeah Tracy yeah. wrote that, yeah. We refused. I said, okay, we can have one song that's roughly about it. I just don't want to know about it, <laughs> apart from that, you know. Um, so, yeah, she had that idea at that, that point. So, anyway, um, obviously, then then we got past that. And the record company said, look, we really want this out. We really need, you realise it's been eight years. Of course, as I said, me going, no, it hasn't. It's only probably been about four or five or so. No, you know, whatever. They said, no, this is it. You're going to go in record. You know, I think it was in October. Which you can, blah, blah, blah. It's got to be out by for next year, for this year. So we went, and they were serious. You know, this time they'd got serious. We're, oh, bloody hell, we better do it then, you know. And so that's <laughs> that's how we ended up doing it because we got because we had no choice really. Oh so, yeah. The so, sweet I think that's, yeah. Sorry. That's the way. That's the way we work best, you know. Just do it. Were you the, were you the same yeah. way in in school with your homework, Jim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's like you know, it's it's the last minute. Well, especially with me, everything's bloody last minute, and I keep going. I, I've got. I never learn. You know, it's taken me all these years. I still still leave everything to last minute. So, um, but yeah, I think it worked out well because we we did obviously we were collecting up ideas over the years, but you know to be actually told that this is when you're in, this is ha when you've got to have these songs ready, then you then you you know you know you have to get them ready and you know otherwise that would be it. So yeah, I think it how was, how would how would you describe in one sentence like the the album the sound of the album? So like we have so we have a headline. How would you describe? Well, the album in one short sentence for those people who have not heard it. Oh, bloody hell. Some homework. Uh, <laughs> um, one sentence. That's impossible. In no, one it sentence. isn't. Oh, all right. Okay. Um, well, it's, it, it's a rock and we're a rock and roll. Like, as Lemmy used to say, we're a rock and roll band. I mean, it's, um, it's a but this specifically rock rock album, band. we're not talking about you as a band. This yeah, I know, like, but that's I'm, I'm an alien. I've just landed on Earth, uh, and I go, I pick this album up, and I go, "What is this?" And you say, "All right, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna nick one of Joe Stump's lines. Then I'm gonna say, fierce slab of heavy metal rock and roll.' There you go. Right. There you go. There yeah. you got it. A fierce yeah. slab of heavy metal rock and roll. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think that's pretty good. Did you? Yeah. I mean. With, he, Go ahead, Alan. Sorry. No, no, he put you on the spot. I think you came up with a good one. <laughs> well, I nicked half of it off Joe. He's always saying the, their album's a fierce slab of metal, so I've just stuck the rock and roll bit in. <laughs> just toss it in there. Um, <laughs> what did your what, when you're when you're young and you guys start off young? What did your mom think? Like, what what's my daughter doing here? Like, did did did, did take get you the proper or? job, Kim? Get a proper <laughs> yeah, yeah. job. Well, you need to get married. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, blimey, no way. Um, yes, well, that, I did have to get a proper job. They made me get a proper job because obviously when I left school and I said, you know, I want to be in a band, they said, oh, well, uh, and I said, Dad, I need some money, you know, to buy a guitar and an amp and everything. I, Can you lend me the money? And he said, on one condition, he said, I'll lend you the money as long as you get a job and pay me back every week, you know, until, you know, whatever. So obviously to test me to see if I really meant it, you know. So yeah, I had to get a job in a bloody bank for a year. <laughs> I worked in Lloyd's Bank, lost the road for a year, and I paid off my dad. I was doing um, uh, two residences with Painted Lady, which was obviously before girls' school um, on, on Thursday and a Sunday. Getting up and getting two buses to work and working at the bank, and uh, yeah. And then after a year, I paid him all off, and he, he they realised then that. We were serious, and that's of course when they let us take their van and uh, drive it into the ground. Yeah, <laughs> but let, let you take their van, or it was appropriated by girls' school. Yep, sorry, did they let you take the van, or it was appropriated by girls' school? Oh, uh, well, yeah, well, we did nick it a bit, yeah, <laughs> but uh, no, they were very proud of us in the end, and everywhere they could, could come, they came, you know, all our parents did, yeah, sadly, no longer with us, but um. Yeah, that was a, a bit of a family affair in the beginning, definitely. Yeah. Well, your work ethic, well, your work ethic really paid off even years later, right? It just uh -huh. set the, the, the groundwork for what it is today. Yeah, well, I, so well, I hope so. 
with with Elton John retiring now, the Eagles announced they're retiring. What are your plans for touring? Uh, do you what, what you know? Are you going to keep going or? Uh, um. Well, I've been I've been sort of trying to retire for the past few years, really, but the others <laughs> won't let me. <laughs> so, uh, but no, it's getting more fun. I mean, that's the, the weirdest thing. So you know, especially I didn't expect it to this album to be so well received. Well, I'm pleased, obviously, because we love it. But um, you know, now there's more stuff coming in. And as I say, the record company yet want yet another album next year. And we're laughing about this. We're going, oh no, what we're going to call it? I know. We're going to have to call it FFS forty six. In other words, for <laughs> fuck's sake, forty six. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah so we'll see but uh yeah we're supposed to be going to south america in not long now in um september with alcatraz and in the states we're supposed to be a little tour at the end of this year i oh, know we're okay. definitely coming next year because we're already booked in for that hell's heroes thing mm -hmm. i think down in you know in texas or somewhere in um i know it's not near you lot but so uh, but we're definitely going to be that way <laughs> that way over there no, so that's come sort to of, and then they're already talking about another um european and british tour to actually promote this album so i oh. don't know what's going on i have no idea i just get told what, what we're doing i go okay <laughs> you know i just want to ask you iron maiden and scorpions tour 1982 what are your what are your memories from that tour those that was a big year you know that was yeah for both those yeah. bands what I do remember is, of course, it was our first time on a nightliner, you know, on one of these buses. And we actually had a list of the dates up on the door of the bus. And it just went on and on and on and on. We thought, oh, my God, because it was something like three and a half months, you know. And um, so that that I still remember that. We were looking at these dates going, oh, my God. But you were, we were young, you know, didn't, it was just everything was fun. Yeah. So, um yeah, it, but it was great because, of course, we knew I made it a little bit anyway because we were all in that sort of, you know, that that, that lot that of us with Samson, you know, and all that business I made and Saxon, Def Leppard even. And um, so, yeah, and I still remember because they and they'd already been on tour for about this is what I'm saying about touring. They literally I mean, Steve knew what he wanted and he went and did it. You know, he just knew that was what he, he wanted. He knew he was going to have to get out there. And not stop and that's what they did they literally toured for like years i'd say on end you know but um yeah and of course they all came up to us and went oh it's brilliant to hear some london accents because of course they're londoners as well you know so uh that was that was great that was great fun all yeah right. it was just really great well, yeah. we've been up to no good with kim mcauliffe of girl school fame yeah. here on the metal voice and we want to thank you for your time all the success on this new album, which is fantastic. And it, it made me go back and say, hey, what did I miss the first go around? And check out your, your previous uh, albums in the 80s. Oh, cheers. So. Oh, oh, well, thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll come around your neck of the woods. Well, I've got to say, Montreal, um, yeah. we hopefully definitely will, because of course, Denise do four. Her, um, her dad came from Montreal. So oh. yeah. Yeah, there you go. Zufal is very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, actually, I think the last time you played here was at Heavy Montreal. In, yes, uh, with Motorhead yes. and Kiss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was yeah, the last time. Really. So it's been a long time. So we got to call up Giles. Hey, Giles. Yes, I think you should. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get us out there. All right. Thank you so much okay. for being on the show and uh, good luck with the new album. And thank you for your time. Oh, thank you so much, you two. All right. Thanks, Big Kim. Kisses. Bye. Big kisses. All Bye. the best. Bye. Yeah, Bye. Bye. Bye.